Good morning, people. Oh, this camera. I need to get a different lens on here. All right, so I got a Tormach surface grinder. Cute little thing, a PSG 612, I think. Um, yeah, I picked it up Saturday, Friday. It's Sunday. Uh, Friday morning, I was measuring some blade, the uh, a blade I got off the machine. Here, let me show you. So, I've been hard milling the blades. This is a hard milled blade. And you can see the, even the surf, top surface is hard milled. And the back surface is hard milled. So that's what it looks like off the machine. Um, so, the blade are supposed to be uh, 1 8 so 0.125 or 125 thousandths, however you want to read it. And uh, this is what came off the machine. That's uh, not 125, it's 116. And if we measure just slightly down the, well, still 116. But if you measure down here near the uh, tang, you get 119. So 3 thou of uh, lift and a, uh, basically a quarter inch of distance is uh, kind of bad. So, uh, kind of the last thing I need to make these blades sellable is the blades need to be uh, parallel, you know what I mean? Another thing is uh, they don't, in the handles they're not centered, the blade's not centered, and I can't figure out for the life of me why, but I think it has to do with the fact that the blade is not flat or parallel. Uh, to the sides. So, uh, on Friday morning, I was looking at the blade, and I said, I need to do something about this. <laughs> so I go on Craigslist, and there's a pretty good deal for a surface grinder for one of these four mocks. And, uh, yeah, so I, I jumped on it. I grabbed the truck and trailer, and, <sighs> yep, it became a uh, over-the-road hauler, and uh, moved this 400-pound <laughs> piece of equipment on a very big trailer. So, uh, let's see. Well, let me show you it. It runs on uh, 120 volt, so it's not that high high horsepower, but uh, yeah, it works, works good from what I can tell. So this is a three-quarter horse single phase motor, is what is on this thing. Uh, yeah, I cleaned it up pretty good. I have used it, so now it's dirty. I had to mark it, because I'm dumb. I couldn't figure out why the auto oiler didn't work, and the spindle actually has to be turning for the oiler to be on, so pro tip. Uh, yeah, works pretty good. The Z adjustment is kind of a pain. Downwards, it's fine. Upwards, it's kind of uh, jumpy. I adjusted the gib, I think that's what it's called, but it's uh, kind of sticky. So, to turn it on, you hit this on switch, that's cool. Pull the e-stop. I'm not going to turn the spindle on, no, no glasses, but uh, basically you'd hit this, turn the spindle on, wheel off, you know. There's these uh, mode functions, patterns if you will, and it'll follow the pattern that you have set when you hit the start stop button. And then to actually adjust the limits of travel, there's these knobs, and there's a, a, a pickup in the middle. And basically, as long as you start in the center, the table will move between the two, uh, the two uh, what do you call them, pieces of metal. Uh, the red light in the Y direction means that the sensor has picked up uh, the pickups down here, so you can just move the Y a little bit so that turns off so yeah that means once it's off you're in between go ahead and hit start stop and this is how it works actually works pretty good I do wish the Z was automatic, but uh, that would involve quite a few more important bits that it doesn't have, so you gotta take what you can get. Um, this is the finish I got yesterday, 
So I'm obviously new to surface grinding, so it's not the best. This side, not too bad. Got a little boo-boo here. I actually had a couple boo-boos, but I didn't tell anybody about those. So, uh, I found that you can only take one thou at most. <laughs> uh, as a roughing pass, I guess you would call it. There's a counterbalance that sits under here. There's a rod, starts right here. And there's a weight, a big cast iron weight that sits in there. I'm not sure what it's supposed to do. I think it's just supposed to kind of counteract the back and forth because, like I said, this thing only weighs 400 pounds. A cabinet on the bottom is actually pretty nice. Uh, I got this for 1900 used. Uh, it looks like it wasn't used too much. There are a couple of nicks and stuff on it from somebody, you know, learning on it. Uh, this was the deluxe package from Tormach, and it's a 2016. So that would have been like, I think it's 5,500 or six grand ship. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's a it's a decent deal. I mean, I would have liked to pay less. You know, I asked to pay less. Um, it was actually on there for 25, but um, I ended up paying 19. Uh, I kind of needed a surface grinder, and um, so why didn't I go with a more industrial? Uh, size grinder. Well, basically it comes down to the fact that you know that I have those spindle power issues and um, I already have the <clears throat> air compressor running. So having the uh, machine, the air compressor, and this running, I'm kind of out of power. So I figured that I'm not going to be doing much surface grinding. The amount of surface grinding I need to do um, doesn't justify buying a big machine. And another thing is the fact that there's no way I was going to be able to get a bigger surface grinder off the trailer by myself because I only have the engine hoist. So that was already a pain with this thing. Um, what else? Yeah, I mean, uh, this one is 125 and 4 tenths, and uh, it's basically over this distance, uh, 2 tenths of, uh, like, climb, if you will. So, I mean, that's pretty good for somebody who doesn't know how to surface grind, and don't tell anybody this, but I didn't even dress the wheel yesterday. It's not because I didn't have the dresser. Well, actually, the dresser is broken that they gave me. Somebody, it looks like somebody crashed into it, so I didn't use it. Uh, I have a new dresser coming in today. But that's with it, without it dressed. And uh, to me, that's pretty good. It's not fast by any means. It's, it's definitely not fast. And I realize that I'm going to have to face down the stock to like 10 thou away in the machine before I put this on there. Because I probably spent two hours... <laughs> taking out the 35 thou that I needed to after this was hard milled. So yeah, I was standing here for quite a long time. But the results speak for themselves. Um, and if this is the final ticket to actually making a sellable blade or a sellable knife, then it was money well spent. And uh, we can grow from here, obviously. So uh, let's see, what else? Um, it does shake a little on the back and forth in the X. Uh, I think it just has to do with the weight, and I obviously haven't noticed any crazy surface problems because of it. But yes, it is a definitely a light duty machine, so don't expect it to take over the world with its grinding abilities. But I don't know. I think it's I think it's perfect for a small little, a really small shop. I mean, it looks it actually looks tiny in here, but uh, for, for a normal sized garage, I think this would be perfect. I mean, it is. It is quite tiny, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So I probably will do a video on actually surface grinding. Um, I'm going to do get a little more practice in. I do want to change the blade. The cool thing is now that I have this to like the, the actual size I need at 125, I don't have to do any fancy like, I don't have to hard mill the actual, uh, the blade out of the block. I can just hard mill the bevels, which will actually save me a ton of time on the machine. Um, which also le leads me to think that maybe I should rethink about how I'm fixturing these. Instead of doing this three bolt system, maybe do a clamp and like one bolt and a dowel pin or something. And uh, that would probably make my life a lot easier. But uh, I have two blanks. I have this one and one more. So I'm going to use the fixture with this style and see what I can get. And then after that, I'll think about actually remaking the fixture and I'll probably probably or maybe not do a video on that but uh yeah so 
If you want to see some Tormach footage in the future, uh, sub. And if you like knife making, sub. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a couple weeks away from selling these things. And uh, yeah, it should be pretty cool. I ordered uh, the boxes. The boxes, I'm doing plastic hard cases, like waterproof cases. And then uh, I got stickers in, and then I got authenticity cards, which I was trying to figure out, like, what should I do for the authenticity cards? And I thought about using these little scraps of titanium I have, but I figured that it's kind of hard to sign your name on the scraps of titanium, and I think that'd be kind of a cool touch. So I ended up getting, like, uh, um, Lux business cards. They're just rounded square business cards with, like, all the knife info on it, and I think those will probably, those would probably be, um, uh, more than adequate for now. And, uh, so yeah, packaging is a, uh, not an afterthought, but it is definitely a, uh, kind of learn as you go, I guess. All right. Thanks for watching.